My decisions are the most critical decisions we make as new Canadians. Here are six money mistakes newcomers in Canada make and how to avoid them. Welcome back to our channel where we share practical tips on how to arrive, excel and thrive in Canada. If you're watching this video, you're already ahead of 90% of newcomers. So let's get started. If you're not leveraging tax credits and Canadian social benefits, hear me out. This is actually one of the most appealing things about Canada. It has a robust system of social benefits meant to support your family financially. Here are a few examples. The staycation tax credit. This tax credit is specific to Ontario. The government of Ontario wants to encourage its residents to travel around the province and contribute to its own tourism industry. And with that, you can get a refundable tax credit for simply having a vacation in Ontario. How cool is that? Another one is medical expenses. You can claim the money you spent on costly medications or medical procedures or equipment and reduce your tax payable. You can also claim tax credits for using public transit in some provinces, as well as student loan interest or even tuition paid. There is also Canada Child Benefit, a completely tax-free monthly payment made to eligible families to help with the cost of raising children under 18 years old. There are many more tax credits and benefits offered on both provincial and federal level. So make sure to check out your province's website and canada.ca for more info. Did any of these benefits surprise you? Let me know in the comments below. Neglecting credit building early on. Some cultures like ours look at credit as a burden, a last resort when nothing else works. So many newcomers, when they come to Canada, avoid it at all costs. And that costs them a lot, ironically. The reality is that credit is a powerful tool when used right. Without credit, it will be hard to get a car loan, rent a home, or even open a cell phone account. Here are the two things we highly recommend. Getting a Canadian credit card is one of the best investments you can make as a newcomer in Canada. It may be hard to qualify for one without a credit history, though. That is why we recommend looking into a secured credit card option. Online banks like Neo Financial offer an excellent no-cost secured credit card while offering amazing cashback rewards on everyday purchases. We will leave the link below if you want to check them out and get an extra 40 bucks. Whenever offered, open a credit line as well. It costs you nothing to open it and it costs you nothing to have it. You don't have to use the money. And if you do, its interest is typically lower than the credit card interest. Having access to these funds could give you an extra peace of mind. And if times get tough, you can use it to pay off your higher interest credit card. Having an open credit line is an additional diversified type of credit you have. This will help you build your credit profile for larger purchases like a car loan or mortgage. Paying cash. I'd lost or gotten my wallet stolen twice within the first two years in Canada. I had more than $200 in cash there, my IDs and some other things. It was upsetting. But luckily, I did get one of those wallets returned to me with all the cards, but no cash. That was one of the very first lessons on why I should not carry cash with me. I also used to have this habit of putting cash in my back pocket. And for some reason, those dollar bills absolutely loved sliding out of my back pocket. I've lost many more dollars like that in my lifetime. Aside from that, everything in Canada is built on credit system and credit cards. The cool thing about credit cards is that they have a robust fraud and loss protection system. So even if you get your card lost or stolen, you're insured and you can get your money back. If someone steals your credit card information and makes purchases, you can also get all that money back. I had a credit card fraud happen to me just a few months ago. I noticed I had three payments of around $1,000 in total on my credit card. They were made in another city, hundreds of kilometers away from where I was. I simply called my bank, reported the fraud, and they instantly applied the credit on my card and told me they would launch an investigation. A month later, I received a letter confirming it was indeed a fraud. Next, if you're moving to Canada, you likely have friends and family left in your own country. It is not uncommon for newcomers to keep their homeland bank accounts open and even continue using them, and that can bite you. Overlooking currency exchange and transfer fees is another mistake newcomers in Canada make and end up losing hundreds of dollars. I was able to save hundreds of dollars on moving money between Russia and Canada, and here's how I did it. First, 
Different banks have different exchange fees. These fees also fluctuate. When you're moving large sums of money, even a few cents difference in exchange rate can result in hundreds of dollars. Make sure to plan for your transfers and keep an eye on the exchange rate. Alternatively, use specialized currency exchange services or make sure to open multi-currency bank accounts to minimize the instances of currency exchange. I personally like to use WISE to make international transfers and payments. They give better exchange rates and provide lower transfer fees, and it takes less than a day to receive money. If you wanted to check out WISE, make sure to use the link in the pinned comments below and you will get your first transfer under $800 for free. If you do decide to stick to your regular bank transfers, keep in mind that banks are extremely suspicious of international transfers, especially when large amounts of money are involved. So plan accordingly and consider transferring smaller amounts of money. Not knowing your tenant rights and responsibilities. Landlords can be assholes, and the fact that newcomers don't know local laws and need to find a new home fast makes newcomers an easy target to be taken advantage of by landlords. Here are a few signs that you're getting scammed by a landlord. They're asking for a deposit before you signed a lease, or they're asking for a paper cash deposit. If the landlord doesn't want to meet you in person, it's not a good thing as well. If they ask you for 12 months rent in advance, that is illegal in Ontario, for instance. Although, it's not illegal for a tenant to suggest that to a landlord. And lastly, they want you to commit before showing the property. Always see the property in person. Once you do find a place you're happy to call home, keep in mind that landlord is responsible for all repairs on the property, not you. They're also required by law to provide adequate living conditions like functional heating, electricity, and security. Bringing a minimum required when coming to Canada. When my family first came to Canada, we ran out of money really fast. We brought the minimum required and that was a mistake. Since we didn't have any credit history, we had to put rent deposit equal to four months of rent. We also had to buy furniture, mattresses, fridge, and that was all a very big expense. I think we were short over $10,000 within the first months of moving to Canada, and that was pretty much the amount that we brought with us at the time. It took a big hit on our morale and put stress on finding a job as fast as possible. We couldn't afford to be picky about jobs. Landlords have also become a lot more fierce in the last several years. It is not uncommon to ask for six months rent deposit if you're a newcomer with no credit history. And remember, that's illegal in Ontario. With skyrocketing housing prices, that can be up to $15,000 just on the rent deposit, not to mention furniture, appliances, and winter clothes. Planning ahead is crucial here. Bring more than the minimal amount posted on the IRCC website. This will help reduce the stress and will provide a cushion in case unexpected expenses secure. Another way is to do your best to secure a job before coming to Canada. My pro tip is to use short-term rentals at first and ask your host to be a landlord referral. That's what Anna did. It can really help with negotiating your lease. What money tips would you like to share with new Canadians? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, just hit that lovely like button below to let YouTube know that more people should see our video. And make sure to subscribe to our channel not to miss new videos. As always, Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. You guys are making a huge difference and I want you to know that. Take care, we'll see you next time.